for PV, uh, polycythemia vera, um, you, you pointed out two in particular. So I'd like to talk about those. One is resfertide, which um, helps to possibly eliminate phlebotomy, which I think would be huge, of course, <laughs> huge news for a lot of patients. Um, the phase two, is that right? A phase yeah. two yes. study. Can you talk more about um, what this means? And it's a shot, right? It's a shot that would help sort of replace the phlebotomy. Yes, it's injection under the skin once a week. Now, polycythemia vera is different than myelofibrosis. It's, uh, we call it earlier in the, in the life of the myeloproliferative neoplasms, there are abnormalities that uh, lead to uncontrolled cell growth for real, and polycythemia vera patients come with a very high red blood cell count. And about many have also high white cells and high platelets. That's why it's called polycythemia, all the cells grow. Some patients may have enlarged spleen or have uh, some symptoms, that's fine too, but not as bad as myelofibrosis. So, and the life expectancy is, is much, much longer. We don't really worry about much of our expectancy, but we worry about what is the main cause of dying. And that is the blood clot. So thrombosis, a blood clot. So we wanna manage the patients for their thrombotic risk. What is the risk of having a blood clot? So we divide the patients in those that are at the low risk for blood clot. And in those patients, we just do phlebotomy. Now, what is phlebotomy? It's a bloodletting. You know, you put the needle in the vein and you let the patients bleed for some time. Not for too long though. You collect a couple of bags and you decrease with that a red blood cell count because the red blood cell count is number one problem that leads to blood clot. So it's standard practice for many patients just to do phlebotomy occasionally to decrease the red blood cell number in the blood. And then you give them baby aspirin to decrease the stickiness. Now, some patients may have a problem with too many phlebotomies, right? Or with the phlebotomy, you eliminate iron from the body. Red color is in part, part of the iron. May have a symptoms from the procedure or symptoms from iron deficiency. So rusvertide in this case may come as a choice because it cuts the iron supply to bone marrow. That's what it does, very simply. It stores it in the liver or spleen and other parts of the organ of, of the body, I'm sorry, of the patients. No iron for the making of red blood cells. Immediately, boom. And it's safe. So that is being developed as a therapy in patients that are on phlebotomy regimens and have too many phlebotomies. There are many other patients with PV that are already taking some medications. Hydroxyurea is the chemo chemotherapy, pill by mouth, or uh, interferon as injection under the skin, or, or ruxolitinib that we talked about is also being used in PV, but maybe it doesn't work. Still too many phlebotomies. Well, brucertide works in that case too. No matter whether you are on any pills or not, just phlebotomy, it works in great, great majority of the patients. So quite amazing actually, the new way of looking at the biology of the disease to cut the supply of the iron to the bone marrow biologically physiologically, if you like, in the body of the patients. And there is a plan for a phase three randomized study next year in people with PV that have too many phlebotomies. You can say, I don't know, three or four a year, too many. We want a patients not to have a need for a phlebotomy at all, just maintain the low number of red blood cells all the time, decrease that blood clotting risk as much as you can. So these patients will be randomized between the placebo and the rusvertite for possible approval. Quite an exciting approach. That is, um, and it's new. And so I have to ask, would it be, how often would someone have to get that shot just as many times as they would be, instead of the phlebotomy, it'd just be the shot instead? Once a week, people do it on their own at home. And they would come occasionally to check the blood count, see whether there's any adjustments necessary in the dose, which is not usually a problem. Okay. And I, I would be remiss not to ask about were there any notable side effects so far in terms of the shot? In fact, just a little bit at the site of injection in some patients, but nobody really stops because it goes away. You change the site and belly or arm or a leg and uh, not much anything else. It's, a, it's a, another biological principle of the disease has been analyzed and discovered how to best uh, approach it. And this is a very good example. And, um, you know, there, there are different developments happening um, 
for, for PV. And I want to be able to shift now to another one um, that you talked about, uh, which <laughs> I just really, when I look at the text, I get very overwhelmed by the pronunciation. So maybe I'll just avoid it. But <laughs> uh, this Rimi is like the, the name that I'm just going to say. Uh, what okay. was the latest update with, with this, uh, with PV patients responding better um, than to the hydroxyurea? So we said that some patients with PV are treated only with bloodletting, phlebotomy, and the baby aspirin, right? But that's actually a third of the patients. A two thirds of the patients uh, are judged to be at a high risk for blood clotting, and phlebotomy alone is not good enough. So you give them chemotherapy by mouth, that's hydroxyurea, or injection under the skin, which is interferon, a biological product. We all have interferon in our body, it's immune booster. When you give it extra as injection, it can control the bone marrow growth of the cells and even normalize it sometimes and affect the malignant clone. The number of cells with the mutations may decrease. And in some patients, you can give a ruxolitinib jack inhibitor, right, to decrease the growth and inflammation. But now interferon has been around for 50 years, actually, different preparations of interferons. And now on November 12, this year, the first time ever in the United States that one of these interferons has been approved. And that's the one that you're calling Besremi. It's a commercial name. The real name is Ropeg Interferon. We call it Ropeg. Uh, it's a slow release of interferon that is given under the skin every two weeks. Many patients apparently can give it even once a month. A fewer injections means better tolerance because with injections, it causes flu type symptoms. Uh, if you give it any other week or every four weeks, that doesn't happen many times. So tolerance goes up. With the tolerance, you can then expect efficacy. So in three quarters of the patients, it normalized the blood count completely. Normal red blood cells, white cells, and the platelets, not just the red blood cells, all three. It was approved in Europe two years ago, and now it's approved in the United States. We learned about five years of therapy on a study that was done in Europe. Uh, more than half the patients are still on therapy. It can be given as a first line, which would be my preference, is a biological agent. It can be given after hydria as a second line. It works the same way. It doesn't really make any difference. And it can actually, and that's potential that I'm talking about, it can change possibly the number of cells with, affected by the disease over time to non-detectable. This is very something unusual to see so far with any other therapy. We call this a molecular response. You can measure the number of cells in the blood affected by the disease. We don't really know what to do out of it, but it's very instructive that, uh, yeah, there is a therapy that possibly can aim forward to what you ask for malfibrosis. Can we eliminate disease? Can we prevent progression? Because some patients with PV do go to malofibrosis. Can you prevent that? When they go to malofibrosis, the outcome is worse. Some patients go to acute leukemia from PV. Not too many, but some do. That's really not very good at all. So if you can minimize or eliminate detectable malignant cells, does this mean you're preventing progression? Are we talking about the cure? These are open questions. They're all big questions. No answers today, but potential exists. And it appears to be safe and appears to be effective for years. So that's at least the background where we now want to build on it, like we said, build on the what we know about jack inhibitors in the MF here. Let's build on the interferon. It's just approved. Let's let's learn about it. Let's ut utilize it to the maximum to optimal efficacy over many years for our patients with PV. Which is again all very promising. Um, although of course we need more data, but. Um, ROPEG, that's so much easier to say. <laughs> um, it was interesting what you said. So you could, it's what it's being studied for is, I mean, it could be first line. You could start it, start right with, with ROPEG and, or you could use hydroxyurea and then use ROPEG after. My question would be, is the only difference, well, there's different administrations, right? So there's one that's a pill, one that's the shot, but is it also what, I mean, what you just said was a big point. It may have the ability, you know, as a biologic to actually it not just control, but help with the disease itself. Yeah, change the natural history. That's the big potential, which we strive to prove or disprove over time. 
And the key is that you can actually provide the therapy for many years, because so far in the past, we were not able to do that. Usually it was maybe three to five years maximum that you can provide the old fashioned interference that you have to give much more often that they have much more toxicities. This one is different. And so it's really, uh, what we need to do is embrace the new therapy. Now it's approved and, and try it in everyday practice in many more patients and see whether we can give it for five or 10 or 15 years and whether we can really change the natural evolution of the disease. And that's my last question is about what you just brought up, which is really like the, the side effects, the quality of life issue, because you can have, you know, great efficacy, but if people cannot stay on it, then it's not very effective, right? So what is it with ROPEG interferon that uh, in terms of side effects so far that we've seen? So they are not as prominent, but they are the same types as in the past. So less often, but we worry about depression. We worry about uh, autoimmune problems making people have a, a condition where the body attacks it on uh, its own parts, like autoimmune problems. And uh, we wanna also make sure that uh, there is no uh, problem with uh, too much of a suppression of the bone marrow, causing anemia or thrombocytopenia. But typically it's about this mental state, depression and autoimmune problems. You would actually exclude those patients from participation in such a therapy because you know that there is a, some small chance of a risk actually to cause some of these uh, issues with depression and, and autoimmune problems. So um, these are known, not as common, and the dropout, uh, meaning how many people stop the therapy with dropout interferon due to side effects uh, over five-year observation in this study that I described is very low, 10%. So it's not very common. Thank you so much for that. And for everyone who wants access to this full conversation, just head to thepatientstory.com where you'll find human answers to your cancer questions.